I think everybody has a lot of coffee this morning. Everybody is awake, everybody is chatting. Good to see. Uh, we have four great presentations line, lined up for you today. Uh, our, uh, so there's, I'm going to give you just house rules. The presentations will take each 20 minutes, and we only have five minutes for questions and answers immediately following the presentation. But when all the present presentations are done, uh, we will have uh, 30 minutes of Q&A. So it's good if you stay here. And if you have any questions, uh, jot it down on a paper uh, so that you don't forget it. Uh, so that's, and then make sure that your uh, phones are on silent or turned off. Uh, that's, that's all for the housekeeping. So we're, with, uh, we're gonna proceed with our first presentation uh, that, with Dr. Xiaofen Liu from, the, uh, univers from <coughs> Penn State University. He is going to be uh, presenting, uh, share with us roles of automation and cloud computing in hydraulics models. Good morning. Um, Thank you for the introduction. Uh, again, I'm Xiaofen Liu. I'm an associate professor at uh, Penn State University um, in the uh, civil and environmental engineering department. So I'm going to talk about uh, um, some of the work we have been uh, doing uh, along the line of uh, 2D hydraulics and modeling. Uh, so I'm going to focus on how do we automate the process and uh, the need of uh, cloud computing. So basically, I'm, I'll I'm going to ask two questions. Uh, first one is how do you run your hydraulics uh, model, right? Um, are you preferred to use a GUI, like graphical user interface, or click buttons, right, and let it run? Or uh, you want to run it using some kind of a script, right? So, and you will see what's the difference later. And the second question is where do you run your hydraulics model, right? Well, typically what you're going to do is you can log into your office computer or laptop and, and run it, right? Uh, or you can run it somewhere else, like in the cloud. So those are the two questions um, going to be the, um, the focus of the talk. So how do you run your hydraulics models? Uh, well, you can use GUI, right, graphical user interface, or SMS, or HackRAS. Right? They have very nice um, uh, graphical interface. Well, it's pretty easy to use, right? Yeah, straightforward, and uh, uh, it's good for if you only, only run uh, like a small number of uh, uh, cases, simulations. Right? But the, the problem is uh, it lacks the automation. Right? You, you always have to click right? and then type, and then you know, it uh, leans a lot of uh, attention along the way. Um, so I have the two pictures right here. On the left is the SMS. On the right is the HECRAS, right? It's pretty very familiar for, for all of you guys. But what about on the other side? You know, so I'm going to run. Uh, and control the simulations using some kind of a script. Right? Uh, by scripting, I mean Python in this talk, but of course you can use other language, um, but Python is probably the most popular uh, language for scripting right now. So you can sc use script to uh, control the simulation runs. Right? You can automate the simulation process. For example, you can use uh, script to do pre-processing and then simulate the, the cases and then do post-processing all in a script. Right? Like I have an example here, so, sorry for the small font, but you get the idea of you know, using some kind of a four lines of Python code, right? you just uh, run a pre-processing, and in this case is a, um, a script for running SR, SR2D. So you know you have to run pre-processing and then run the model and then you exit, right? So everything is just um, running behind the scene, right? Um, well, what is uh, scripting good for? It's good for, if, for the case that if you want to run many, many simulations, right? Um, and, and yesterday, you know, we have uh, many people talk about uh, uncertainties, right? Uh, uncertainty quantifications, uh, sensitivity analysis. You know, all these uh, applications, you do need to run many, many, right? Like uh, tens of thousands of cases. In those cases, GUI, right, definitely um, uh, is not good for that kind of a job, right? Uh, so scripting is also good uh, for smart simulations, right? So uh, uh, one example of that is to do calibration, right? So smart, you know, for example, if you run one case and you look at the result, 
hmm, now I need to change the parameters for, I mean, to that direction, right? So, or do some kind of an optimization, right? So this kind of a smart simulation, you can use script to do that, right? You don't have to, to, to you know, go through the process you know, uh, manually. And um, scripting is also good for cloud computing, right? Which I'm gonna show uh, later. But of course, uh, scripting needs uh, programming. So you need, do need to do some uh, programming, but I'm gonna show you using Python, for example, it's gonna be pretty uh, easy. And to, um, to, to do scripting, um, what we have done is that uh, we come up with some kind of a Python package to do all these things, put, in, put all these uh, uh, processes in the package so you can, uh, if you wanna use it, you can just call these functions in this package. So it's called a PyHMT. Py, of course, is for uh, Python. HMT uh, stands for Hydraulic Modeling Tool, right, to 2D. So it's, it's, this package is, is designed majority for 2D hydraulics modeling. Of course, you can use it to control Hikers 1D, for example, right? Um, so like I said, the purpose of this, is, this package is to control and automate the hydraulic simulations and to do pre-process, uh, post-processing. Uh, and do automatic calibration uh, using the Python optimization package. There are many, many uh, very um, powerful optimization packages in Python. Uh, it's, it's mainly because of the uh, AI machine learning community. You know, they need to do a lot of uh, optimizations, right, to use the big data. Uh, and then do format conversion, right? Uh, this um, uh, feature is uh, because uh, we are, you know, we are doing um, one of the NCHRP uh, projects, uh, 2449, on the uh, topic of uh, manis and uh, for, for 2D models, right? which is ongoing. Right? It's going to end uh, sometime next year, and you will see the final report uh, uh, later. So, um, and um, and one thing we find out for that project is, well, manis and in different models might be different, right? If for the same case, if you use Hecras 2D or use SH2D, or whatever other 2D models use, right? They might be different, right? But how do you quantify the difference? Well, you're gonna have a level ground, right? So one thing we, wanted, we did is to run all these models for the same case, use the same mesh and same anything, and see what's the difference, right? Uh, so that's something we did in that. So you can, I'm gonna show one example later, so is that you can convert to one uh, models mesh and manison to the other model, and then you run and, and have a fair comparison. Um, of course, right, I already have that. Uh, uh, so this is uh, open source, right? You can go to the GitHub, right? It's um, in, on, on um, PyHMT. Uh, you can just uh, download, install, and then try it out. So I already um, mentioned a, a lot about you know, motivation of doing this. Uh, basically, it's for convenience, right? Efficiency and you know, automation. Um, so uh, I, you know, I had listed a, a couple of use examples here, right? You do everything in the Python script, right? Just, you have this script and then you just let it run and it can do whatever you wanna do inside. Uh, automate the repetitive tasks, right? Such as calibration optimization. Uh, and, and then it can bridge the hydraulic models uh, with the Python universe, right? In, in Python universe, there's a lot of uh, very powerful and useful uh, packages, for example, for, to do statistics, right? Or uncertainty an analysis or, or sensitivity analysis. Right? You need to have a lot of a statistics package to do that. Uh, machine learning and AI, I have one slide to show that. GIS, you know, parallel computing, Python computing, because um, most of the Python, uh, uh, most of the cloud computing um, uh, providers, right, they, they have the Python interface, right? You can just call Python functions, send your stuff to the cloud and then get the result back, right? So uh, that automatically take care of that. Um, and then you can do Monte Carlo simulations, right? UQ and sensitive analysis and all these things, right, so I mentioned. Um, so what is uh, Python and machine T not, right? Well, it is not a, a, a another hydraulics model, right? It doesn't solve any governing equations. It just help you to run uh, any of the model of your choice. Um, so it's not intended for case preparations tasks such as mesh generation, set up bond condition, initial conditions, and things like that. You know, for these tasks, you still need to use HECRAS, GUI, right, or SMS uh, to prepare these things. But once you have the case prepared, then you can manipulate this case, right? For example, I can read the case files and change you know, things inside, run it, right, and then repeat those uh, over and over again. So. Um, so 
What are the hydraulics models does the Python, uh, PyHMT uh, 2D support? Well, right now it supports two, uh, probably the two most uh, popular uh, 2D models, at least in this country, right? SH2D and HackRas 2D. So uh, basically you can use this package of Python uh, to control the runs of these two models, right? And, and more can be added in the future, of course. So I'm gonna show you some examples of, of uh, how to use that. But before that, I'm gonna uh, first say is the pros and cons of uh, using Python scripting to do these kind of things. Um, the pro, of course, is very flexible and very uh, powerful, right? Then just, you know, just clicking around on the screen, right? Um, and then on the other side, right, of course, you need to do some Python programming, right? Uh, but don't be scared about uh, uh, this programming thing, right? Uh, actually, you know, Python programming, like I said, is very easy to learn. Uh, there are many, many tutorials online. Um, and then I, I even have my lecture notes, right? I teach my undergrad students um, uh, in my computing master's class. Uh, and I have all the lecture notes uh, uh, on, on GitHub. If you're interested, you can go there and, and download, right? It's all based on Python. Um, so uh, next I'm gonna show you some examples. You know, how do you use these uh, Python scripting to control th things? So the first one is, um, like I said, you can do a format conversion, right? So this is one script example. I converted a HackRas 2D mesh and Manison to SH2D. So they have, so for this case, right, they have the exact same mesh, right? same node, same line, same cells, right? And for each cell, the same many is M. And boundary conditions, initial conditions are exactly the same, right? And then you run them and then you compare the result. As you see here, and I only have, uh, how many lines, uh, two lines. Right, so what I did behind the scene is I loaded the HECRAS um, case files, right, you read the files, uh, parse that to understand the format, and then convert it to SH2D, and then you can, you can run it. So here's the result. I right? cite uh, comparison between uh, HECRAS 2D and SH2D. Um, so you see um, on the screen, right, so this is the result from the two, two, uh, two uh, models, um, so more or less, right, they kind of uh, comparable, but if you uh, look into the like a uh, little details, right, for example, um, you know, you cannot see this on the screen, but uh, our point of here is that, you know, they look similar, but if you zoom in, uh, you can, you, you see some kind of difference here, right, for example, here, uh, and here, right, the, at least the color, slightly different, right? Uh, the good thing about this is that I, I not only can visually compare the difference, but I also can do subtraction, right? Because they have the same mesh and everything, right? So I can use one result, subtract from the other result, I can visu visualize and quantify the difference, right? So you can do that. Um, uh, here's another example, which is, you know, I use uh, the uh, script to run uh, one SH2D simulation. Right, so this is how you can do that, right? Basically, you know, you don't have to read all these uh, scripts, but they're pretty simple. You know, uh, the, you know, the process is pretty, very straightforward. So what I do is I initialize the SH2D model, and then I open, open a, a project. Right? In this case, it's SRH Hydro file, which is the main control file for, for SMS, right? Uh, running uh, SH2D. And then I run the pre-processing and then run the simulation and then close it off, right? And then you get everything already. So what, I, what it really happens behind the scene is that when I say run pre-model, uh, basically what it does is cause the SH, uh, pre, sh2d pre.exe and then do everything, right? So, uh, so, uh, so I can run one simulation, right? Uh, of course I can run as many as I like, right? You just put it in a do loop, right? So here's one example of uh, doing Monte Carlo simulation. I'm running, uh, in this case, I only run like 200 cases, right? Uh, for this case, what I wanna do is to quantify the uncertainty associated with the uh, main instance of this uh, main channel somewhere in the middle, right? And all other blocks are, are the uh, flat plane. So uh, for this main instance, I'm not sure what main instance should I use, right? Well, you guys all know that for uh, 2D models, right, probably the, the most uh, uncertain uh, parameters are, you know, for example, main instance, right? 
or the upstream uh, discharge, right? Um, so those are things that we are uncertain. And yesterday, and you saw in the presentations that, uh, you know, a little bit of a change of uh, discharge, right? It could change the, um, the boundary of the inundation, right? So some people might think, oh, I live in outside of the flood zone, but uh, in fact, you do, right? So there's a lot of uncertainties. Uh, it's, um, it's critical that we quantify that. Uh, so here's what I did, use the script. You know, I'm, I'm gonna show you the uh, script, but uh, just show the result. So what I did is, okay, since I'm not sure about the, the medicine for this main channel, which is, So this uh, uh, many stem, I'm not sure what value, but but I know somehow uh, it should be in some range, right? Based on our engineering judgment, right? So in this case, the many stem, I say, okay, it's gonna somewhere between 0 0.03, which is my favorite many stem right? tell my <laughs> tell my students in open channel hydraulics, if you're not sure, just use 0 0.03, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's what actually is one of the guidelines we're gonna come up with, right? I'm kidding. <laughs> so it's going to be, uh, so I'm not sure, but uh, I know it's somewhere between 0 0.03 and 0 0.05, right? So I'm going to assume, okay, so it's going to follow some of a, a normal distribution uh, uh, in this uh, uh, zone. And then uh, I sample um, however many uh, uh, medicine I want in this distribution. For each medicine, right, I'm going to run one case, right, and then save the result. And then I'm gonna take another value, so I can take a 200, 2,000, or 20,000, as many as you like, right? And then you run that, um, and then uh, you can do statistical analysis, right? So in this case, what we did is, uh, I'm gonna look at the uh, water surface, surface elevation at one monitor point, right? I think the point, the point is somewhere here. Uh, and then I can do uh, 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 exceedance of probability distribution of, uh, uh, the water surface elevation at this monitor point. As you can see, um, so on the horizontal axis, it's the probability of exceedance. On the vertical, it's the simulated water surface elevation. Uh, so probability is from 0% to 100% exceed, right? So the range of the water surface elevation, I believe, is somewhere between like two feet, right? So you do see the uncertainties uh, associated with this Manison just for the main channel, right? So you can do these kind of things. Um, so just one slide to show, uh, you can also use um, um, uh, the wonderful world of uh, uh, AI and machine learning uh, nowadays and combine that with computational hydraulics, right? So in this case, what we did is um, we uh, replaced the physics-based model, which is SR2D, right? Well, SR2D uh, solved the uh, government equations, uh, which are the physics, right, uh, in mathematical forms and uh, replace that with uh, what we call the data-driven model, right? So for data-driven model, what we did is we run the case for many, many uh, different combinations of input, right? And then generate a, a huge data set, right? And use that data set to train the data-driven model. Uh, anyway, the bottom line is uh, you can use um, uh, the, the Python script right, to manipulate and control the uh, runs of uh, many thousands of simulations, right? And then you can generate data like that. Um, so uh, if you are interested in this topic, you know, we can talk later, but uh, you know, it can be done. So uh, for the remaining couple of minutes, I'm gonna talk about uh, you know, where do you run your uh, uh, hydraulic modeling, right? So the question is, is, well, you talk about cloud computing. So why, we, why do we need a cloud computing, right? So, uh, of course, it makes a physical, it makes a, uh, economical sense, right? Otherwise, we're not gonna do that, right? So, um, I got a lot of questions, um, well, how much does it cost, right? So, I'm gonna give you some example. This is the uh, price I, I got a couple of days ago when I was preparing this slide. Uh, for example, Amazon uh, uh, Cloud, uh, if you wanna use the uh, 16 cores, right? Uh, the price is about, uh, I would say $1 per, per hour. It depends on what kind of uh, instance you want, right? So that kind of gives you some uh, idea and how much it does it cost, right? Of course, more cores you want, right? The price is gonna come up. Um, so, um, of course, right, um, the, the, the good thing about cloud computing is that you have unlimited computing power, right? Only limited by, I don't know, by your 
credit card, <laughs> right? <laughs> they, they, they do charge you uh, by the number of cores and other things. Uh, you can run hundreds of simulations at the same time, right? If you want to run a lot, right? And you don't have a, a big computer, and then you can use that, right? And it's on demand, right? Uh, it's like electricity, right? It, they charge by seconds, right? Of course, the other thing is you can access the latest hardware, right? Uh, like a latest uh, CPU or GPU, you know, whatever hardware you need, or, or big memory, right? If you have a large case and you, it doesn't fit your um, laptop, you can use their hardware. And uh, um, um, uh, soon the SR2D is going to be paralyzed, and I think Hackrise is already paralyzed, right? So you can use uh, many cores, right, to do these. Um, so uh, what are the steps uh, to do um, uh, cloud computing? So if you want to do it manually, right, it's going to be uh, pretty tedious. Right? First, you need to find uh, what kind of cloud instance I need, or how many cores, how many uh, memories I need. And then you request that. Right? You, you put in your credit card number, and then you can get it, and then log into the cloud instance. So when you log in, it's basically just a remote desktop. Right? Actually, it is remote desktop. Right? Just remote desktop to the, the instance they give you, uh, and then you do whatever you want. But the, but the remote desktop computer is clean. There's nothing on it, right? You have to install SMS, right, before you can use it. You have to install Hackrass, and then copy all the data files to that. And then you can run it as if you're running on your uh, office computer, right? But when you, and then you can run it, and then you can download the result from the cloud, right? And uh, don't forget to shut it down, because if, if you forget, right, they're gonna, <laughs> they're gonna keep charging you, <laughs> right? So that's very tedious, but um, we have a, a, a more a automatic way to do that. Of course, you can use Python script, right? You can write a script, right, for all the steps I showed on the previous slide, right? So there's logging, copying, running, shutting down, just in one script, right? You run it, you know, you go to sleep, right? next day, everything's done, right? Uh, how nice is that, right? Otherwise, we have to stay all night, right? Because you don't want <laughs> you don't want them charge you while you're sleeping, right? So um, so everything can be done. Right? I'm not going to show uh, an example, but it can be done using this Python script. Right? So uh, the take-home message is that uh, using uh, scripting, right? Uh, you don't have to use my package, but using scripting can um, automate the computational hydraulics workflow. Maybe make your life a little bit easier, right? Thank you for that, All right? Questions? Yeah, yeah questions. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We've got five minutes for questions for now, and if you have more, then we can do it for later. Yeah. Yes. Is there a way to like send, a, send you an email or notification if your model crashes your service successfully? Um, so, are you talking about cloud computing or the no, scripting? No. Uh, I guess your first uh, um, uh, The. Oh, the control. Uh, you see, you're asking whether there's, if this error happens, you can get a notification or something yeah. like that. Yeah, you can you can put it inside. Yeah, you can even get a, a, a uh, like a message on your phone or something. You know, Python has all these kind of uh, functionalities. Yeah, but you have to put that logic in your in your script, right? Like say, if this happened, send me a message, right? Yeah. For the for the uh, course notes, yes. oh, that's not uh, for for this package. That's for my undergrad class. You know, just talking about Python programming, right? How do you solve um, uh, learning? Find the roots of an equation. How do you solve linear equation system? You know, solve uh, ODE, PDE, things like that. Yeah. But it does have like a couple weeks in you know, the beginning to talk about the uh, basic Python programming. Yes. How do I develop? So I just call a Python package, right? So they have statistics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a random selection. It's a, it's a random number generation. But the random number follows this um, uh, Python, uh, this uh, a pot, this uh, <laughs> a normal distribution. Yes. It, but it's truncated, right? 
So it's inside this zone that I want. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever distribution you want, you can just you know call the function inside. Yeah. Thank you. Are you talking about the post-processing? Like, uh, I want to get a result at this cross-section or this line? Yeah, yeah, if, if you want, just add it into that, right? Actually, for the, for the monitoring point, you know, I just use that function. Because I only want that point result, right? Because I don't want to save, like, a 20,000 simulation you know, on my hard disk, right? Because that's going to be too much. So, I don't, so after every simulation, I only want one number, which is the water surface elevation at that point. That's the only thing I need. Everything else I just deleted. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Daniel. So I can step out to the first time, so I apologize. Um, so you, you're working with script files. Uh, a lot of the hydraulics engineers are working with DOTs, and it's always tense to just work with browser features and things. Yeah. They basically write it. It's a lot of extra work for them to learn how to manipulate the scripts. Do you have plans in the future to add a GUI or graphic user interface? Alan's right here. I think he's going to talk about it later. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Of course, right? These scripts, you can put a button, I don't know, somewhere in SMS, right? So when people click the button, it just runs the script, right? But if I do recommend you to spend, I don't know, a couple hours, uh, and then you become an expert on Python. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Well, if not, thank you for your attention. <laughs>